show all my people some love. Here we go. In the UK. New Mexico. Everybody come on, y'all. Let's go. Shout out to Japan. You got Miami. Talking about the shy. How about Detroit? Do you feel it? Let's, let's go. And what about the ATL? North Carolina. Philadelphia. You got the NYC. Do you feel it? Do you feel it? I'm your girl Serena Soul Brown coming to you live from your neighborhood to all around the world bringing you 120 jazzy, sexy soul music from the underground to the independent to the mainstream. This is how we do it every Wednesday from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. EST on SSB Radio. Come on and connect. Come on and connect. Jazz, soul. His name is James Biscuit Rouse. He's a singer, songwriter, musician, and producer. Most of us that know him from the big stage, we know him as a phenomenal drummer. All the way from Southwest Philadelphia, y'all, he is here with us today to talk about his music, his influences, and his brand new project entitled Conversations in Analog, Volume 1. So let's welcome for the first time to the Serena Soul Brown Show, James Biscuit Rouse. How you doing? How you doing? I'm doing great. Well, that's good to know. You have been all around the world, Biscuit, and it's so hard to uh, catch up to you, but I'm glad that you took this opportunity to say, stay put so that I could talk to you live right here on SSB Radio. So what's shaking with this new project that you have called Conversations in Analog? Basically, it's um, everything that I've been through up to now musically, Growing up in Philadelphia, traveling around the world with different artists that I've been blessed to work with, and just, it was time to put something out with my name on it and my experiences musically, and just everyday life, everyday life experiences, you know, that we all go through. Well, you know, we can certainly um, appreciate the fact that you're putting out your own project because you have worked with some phenomenal people in the business. Some people that I'm going to just run down the list because I know there's far more than what I see in front of me, but people like Nile Rogers and Sheik and the Apollo House Band, where you currently are, Lauren Hill, uh, Talib Kweli, Ndambi, Bilal, Kelly Clarkson, Khalees, Kindred and the Family Soul, and the list goes on and on and on. And don't let me forget, Philly's own also, Gerald Veasley, Colin the Gang, and Stevie Wonder. So now that you're paying attention to your whole, your own project, how does it feel? It feels great. I'm a little nervous at times. Uh, you know, just coming out, I used to being a side man. And- uh-huh. It, it feels different being out front and being exposed, really exposing being an independent artist. Biscuit, you just look at um, all the experience and all the people you've been with. They have taught you so many things that a lot of people don't realize when they get out here to do this thing, how serious it is. Why don't you tell right. everybody out here how serious it is to be on stage in front of thousands of people and you got to get it right? So, it, I mean, it, it, it's good. I mean, I've, I've had good experiences with it and... Um, I'm, I'm very grateful for it. What was the first time, um, or when was the first time you were on stage in front, in, in front of like a huge audience? J.T. Taylor. Was 19, yeah, 1998, You were on stage with Cool in the Game. J.T., yeah, it was more so J.T. JT. Taylor from Cool in the Game. Okay, J.T. Because he, at that time, he went solo again. So do you think that was what propelled your career, your solo career forward, um, that gave you the opportunity for other major artists to see basically what you were all about? I would I would hold it up to being in the right place at the right time and just making connections with different people. You attended the Philadelphia High School for the Creative Arts, um, Kappa, and you also yes. attended um, Temple University and studied jazz and music tech there. So do you think that owning those um, that background and experience and knowledge and education in the Philadelphia area? Everything has helped me, mm-hmm. I would say. Mm-hmm. Good and bad, you know, trying out for, uh, for um, auditions and getting them or not getting them, you know, it's all been a help. You know, everything I feel builds on each other to make a person who they are or who they're not going to be. And I feel that it's, it's all helped me. 
Who would you say your musical okay. influences um, are in the business, or you know, is that still something that's building in you? Definitely now, Roger. That okay. experience has really taught me a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, I was working for them for like six months. Mm-hmm. Uh, I learned a lot in that six months. Okay. Uh, working with Ray Chu uh-huh. definitely taught me a lot. Um, working for Ms. Lauren Hill. Okay. <laughs> you know, people yeah. want to know all about that, but I was waiting. I was waiting for the right moment, but no. I'm glad you brought it up first. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, tell us about working with Miss Lauren Hill. It's, it's a good experience. Okay. You know, it. I've been there uh, from January '09, and I left in. June of last year, and that's when I wound up having the experience of working with Nile Rogers. Okay. And then just got back. Uh, I was called back in this January. Wow. <laughs> Seems like the beginning of the year. <laughs> said, come on back. She's like, I don't want my drummer back. <laughs> but, you know, it Something is good. Like that. But, you know, it is a good thing because, you know, um, Lauren falls in that category of so many people in our generation that recognize what she brought to the music industry. And for you to even get a piece of that and for her to call you back says a lot about you um, as a musician and your character. And so when you're wanted, yeah, when you're in demand in this business, how does it feel to be in in front of a sea of people like that? It's it's encouraging. It's mm-hmm. encouraging that I'm doing something right. Yeah, you're definitely doing something right. On stage and in the studio, because I don't think many people realize that not only are you a drummer, James, you also sing, because I've heard you sing, and I don't know when you're going to put out something where you're just like, you're just like crooning, because ladies, he can croon, okay? I'm going to tell, tell you that. You know, he got that gospel background. It, it's something that's in his voice that just moves you. It just moves you. And in addition to that, you are writing, arranging, and composing. So let's talk about the studio work that you're doing as well. Working on my wife's album while I'm home, and um, just trying just to write for whoever and whomever. Okay. You know, things come up. You know, little things. Uh, you know, just try to do remixes. You know, give them out to DJs. Okay. See what happens. You know. Conversations in analog. Um, express to me what that sounds like. So that when the people actually listen to the tracks, they can kind of already be prepared for, you know, what you're going to offer. Coming up in Philadelphia with, a, number one, being a TK kid, mm-hmm. you're definitely going to hear church yes. come out. You That's know, awesome. my experience is being in church all my life. Mm-hmm. Growing up, going to uh, bars and clubs, being, being the young kid around all the old heads uh, <laughs> with the whole Philly sound and Philly soul m- music, uh, listening to Butter on Sunday night. Uh-oh, Butterball. You know? <laughs> yeah. Right. So you released two singles back in 2008, Money for Love and Dance, on Defected Records, and that's available on iTunes and CD Baby still, and then another single in 2010 entitled Work It Out. Um, so... As you move from those projects on to this one, do you think this is your best project yet? Uh, yeah. Okay. And I'm, I'm, I'm counting on the next one to be even better than this one. So am I. <laughs> and I know this one is going to be great, but I do want you to keep doing what you're doing, James. We love you around here. And you know what? We have to play this game with you because we do it with all of our indie artists who come on to the show. It's called SSB Fans Want to Know. We want to know all about James Biscuit Rouse. So the first question is, what would be your dream collaboration and who would it be with as a mainstream artist? To work with Quincy Jones. Well, the Q. Q is awesome. What is your favorite downtime? How do you spend your favorite time when you're not recording or out there on the road? Fishing. Really? You're a fisher, huh? Mm-hmm. Okay. You catch any fish lately? Except for your wife? <laughs> <laughs> She'll kill me for that. But anyway. <laughs> what, um, hey. let's see, who's your celebrity crush? Celebrity crush? Mm. You might get in trouble for this one. 
I ain't scared of that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now you said it, not me. <laughs> what is your dream city to perform in? And you've performed already all over the world, but what would be your dream city for you to debut your project? At home in Philly. Wow. That's phenomenal. Okay, and Southwest, yeah. so just all over, any particular venue here? I want to say the Academy of Music. Okay, that's right, shoot high. I'm or with you Kimmel. on that. And the Kimmel Center. Um, explain your image. What does James Biscuit Rouse look like? When people come out to see you, what are the fans going to see? Image-wise? Yes. Uh, well, pretty much <laughs> jeans. Uh, some kind of printed shirt saying something crazy. Something crazy. Or I think that's how I met you, right? Image. <laughs> <laughs> something was crazy on your shirt. I'm like, who is that? <laughs> right. Like, oh, that's uh, Maybe a suit jacket or uh -huh. maybe a sweater, you know. Okay. And a pair of chucks. You know, I like to dress nice but keep it casual. Yeah. So mix the, the two together, you know. Well, it's all good. James Biscuit Rouse. Ladies and gentlemen, check out Conversations in Analog, Volume 1. We're going to be previewing um, a few of his tracks today. So you want to check them out. And also, James, will you give out your Facebook and your website information and how people can connect with you and get a chance to check out your music and also purchase it? Okay. You can reach me at my website, jamesrousemusic.com. On that site, you can definitely see all the dates that I'm doing, whoever I'm playing with. Um, Facebook, just type in James Rouse. And I'm, I've been told there are several James Rouses on Facebook. Are you serious? Not including my father and my son. <laughs> so, you got to change your name. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> But you can actually go to my artist page on Facebook as James Biscuit Rouse. Awesome. And you'll find me there as well. Or on Twitter where I, I really might say something that will really shock you. <laughs> Twitter like. <backslash> Biscuit Rouse. <laughs> so keep okay. your kids away from that site. Wow. You put a disclaimer out there, ladies and gentlemen, so that's a good thing. So is that all? You got Twitter, Facebook, and your website, um, and also on SSB Radio. We'll actually have them featured there as well, ladies and gentlemen. James Biscuit Rouse, we thank you so much for taking the time to come on the show and to spread your love and your music. Thank you. And uh, you know what? Make me your best friend on Twitter too. You know, and and don't say nothing crazy because then I won't hit back. But <laughs> what can I say? I'm gonna have to call your manager, James Biscuit Rouse on the SSB. Holla, y'all. 